Hi, welcome to today's mini organization lesson, organizing your photos. Photos can be so overwhelming because we have so many of them and coupled with having so many of them, we feel guilty that they're not already all in albums or scrapbooks. So we kind of get weighed down under a couple of different guilty mom things. Well, photos are no different than anything else. If you have a good system for organizing them and keeping them organized and adding to the ones that are already organized, it becomes really simple. Like everything else, if you have that system, you can start somewhere and keep moving forward. So one of the things that happens with organization is we start organizing something and then we stop organizing it and it gets messed up again. And because we didn't have a good system, a good mental path, we can't even remember what we were doing and we have to reinvent. And so what that tells our brain is, this isn't working, you need to do something else. Well, the photo organization system that I'm gonna to recommend to you is something that you can start with and use forever. So it becomes really simple. So, super simple step. First thing you need to do is create some sorting templates or a family timeline, however you wanna think about it. Now, when I did mine, I started with, in 1996, which was the birth of my oldest child and um, continued forward to 2013. And I just used a piece of eight and a half by 11 paper, wrote the year at the top, and then at the bottom, I wrote each of my children's names, how old they were, what, what birthday they would be celebrating that year. So 2013, London will be 17 and Max will be 15. And then what grades they were in. So leaving 11th and going into 12th for London, leaving 9th and going into 10th for Max. And then anything I knew off the top of my head that happened in that year, I just jotted a note down. One of the challenges with organizing photos is we come across things and we're like, oh, I can't remember, you know, what, was this when London was in fifth grade? What year was that? And then we're calculating on our fingers how many years back to fifth grade and was that the beginning of fifth grade or the end of fifth grade? So by just including some basic notes, it's gonna really help you as you do the initial sort for your photo. So I put the kids' names, how old they were, what birthday they celebrated, what grade they were in, and anything major. So this is this year, 2013. The only note I have on here so far this year is that London got his varsity letter in pole vaulting. So that's on there. But as you look through the pile, as I was making the sorting templates, you can see there are some years where I knew exactly what had happened and some things that I was unclear clear about and I didn't make any notes for those years. And that's really gonna be helpful as you go through and organize. You can just use this thing that you're sorting onto to continue to make notes. So what you're creating is not only neatly sorted and organized pictures, but you're also getting a little bit of journaling done and putting things in order that way as well. So this is the box of photos that I'm working with and it just says on the front of it, need to sort. So that means these things are totally random. I'm not gonna overwhelm myself by working with the whole box. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my box. I'm gonna pull out the first pile of pictures right here. Hopefully there's something in there that indicates to me what it is. And this is actually a picture of London from the fifth grade. So I'm gonna start with that template. I'm just gonna spread these out. Here's London in the fifth grade. And this is a picture from his school play. I'll give myself a little bit of room here. Um, when he was in the fifth grade, and I know that that was in the fall of his fifth grade year, so I'm starting that. Now, I'm not worrying right now about um, keeping events together, right? Things are just kind of spread around in this box. I don't care. What I'm trying to do is get everything in in the right year. So this is another picture that's a, I can tell it's fifth grade because of London's haircut and how he looks um, compared to this picture, right? He looks the same. So I know that's uh, the same year, and I'm just gonna double check because on the back of this, um, there's, there's some stuff printed. Um, let's see if it has a date on it. No, of course not, it doesn't. But I know this was spring break. We went to um, SeaWorld and he swam with the dolphins for, for that fifth grade year. Now, this is fifth grade fall though, and I just said this is spring break, so this is fifth grade um, spring. So that's two different years, 2006, 2007. But um, with, without this, I, without having my little cheat notes here, I wouldn't remember what those things were, but I'm gonna take my pen now and write, um, and write uh, London uh, SeaWorld trip, right? So now as I come across other pictures from the SeaWorld trip, 
I'll know that they go there. I won't have to think about it. And that's really the key to the sorting templates is making it as easy and, excuse me, as fast as possible to sort those things. So the next important thing, once you get your photos grouped together in year, is to decide what important events in that year are actually going to make it into your scrapbook pages. Now, you don't have to throw away the pictures that you're not going to scrapbook. You can just put them chronologically into photo storage boxes, put a little sticky note on the back of them. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Sometimes people, um, sometimes it doesn't make sense to people. I have my sticky notes in my little basket. So if they're, for, for 2004, I would take my sticky note off the tablet, flip it over so the sticky side's up, and I would write 2004, and then I would be able to put it on the back of a photo, and when I stood that photo up in my photo storage box, it could indicate the year or the event and the year or whatever it is. And when I put it in my photo storage box and put that box of photos away, they would still be in chronological order and they would still be labeled. But these are the pictures that I'm not going to scrapbook that aren't part of my big plan. So there's going to be a certain number of those that get stored away. And then there's going to be the pictures that you actually do want to scrap. And that's where I'm going to recommend that you use our photo storage system. So this is a photo storage box. It comes folded flat and it snaps together. And it comes with a series of, or a set of 10 of our photo files. And you can see the photo, the photo files have things sticking off the end. One of the unique things about our box is that it's big enough, 9 by 11, to hold something like an 8.5 by 11 sheet of memorabilia paper or some sort of brochure or something. So if you want to keep your things together with your pictures or you have bigger pictures, they're still going to fit in that file folder. So inside, your, um, inside the box, that's where you're going to find all of your pictures arranged that you are actually going to scrapbook about. And so the front of the file folder is going to prompt you what was the event, what were the dates of it, um, what is some of the information, the journaling notes that you're going to use, and then it says are there more photos of this event and where are they stored so that you can add that information in there as well. Now on the inside of this folder I've made notes about who's getting how many pictures in which album. Whoa, what was that? Let me backtrack a little bit. When my pictures were in this form, in, in this just simple, what I call timeline folder, before I started um, putting them into file folders, I chose um, how many layouts I was going to do of that event. So I allow myself to choose six pictures per page. That's my sort of guideline, right? Your guideline might be two pictures, it might be ten pictures. But on a double page spread, my goal is to use six pictures on each page, 12 pictures. So before I even start looking at the pictures and choosing them, I'm going to um, decide how many pages I'm going to do for each um, album. So London's album, my album, and then Max's album. So obviously this is London's birthday, so he's going to get four pages for his birthday. In my album, there's only going to be two pages of London's birthday, and in Max's album, just one page of London's birthday. So I know that I need to choose 24 pictures for London's album. I need to choose um, 12 pictures for my album, and I need to choose six pictures for Max's album. So I'm going to choose a total of 42 pictures and put them into this file folder. And that way, now, there's going to be a bunch of extra pictures, right? I took more than 42 pictures at my son's birthday. But those are going to stay in here. They're going to stay in the chronological file, in the photo storage box, in the attic or the closet or wherever you store your great pictures I can't throw away, but I know I'm not going to scrap them pictures. Okay, so we'll get back to that. But in here, now I've got the pictures. I've got some journaling notes. I've got some of the memorabilia that'll fit in here. I know how many pages I'm going to do for whose album. I'm going to take that, that folder and I'm going to put it into the um, photo file box that's labeled 2004 in chronological order. Now when I'm actually ready to scrap that event and I go to get the pictures, I'm not tempted because I have four or five hundred pictures to dig through to find what I need. They're already sorted. They're already in the file folder. I already have the notes. I'm going to take the lid off the box. I'm not going to get distracted by other things that are in there. I'm going to take out the full pictures that I want to scrap and I'm going to be ready to go to work. So whether I'm working at home or whether I'm going to a cropper event, 
boom, I have what I need. I'm going to sit down at my desk and get busy. So this really speeds up the process and because you don't get sucked into um, digging through piles of pictures. You've got pictures, memorabilia, you know what you're going to, you know how many pages you're going to do and for whose album that you're going to do those pages. The nice thing about this is once you're done, you know that you've covered all three albums. So if you're somebody who scrapbooks multiple albums, this makes it super, a super simple way to do that. Also, when you're done creating those pages, if there's any memorabilia left, you know you can throw it away. If there's any pictures left, you can just move those into your chronological picture file. What does a chronological picture file look like? There's no reason to do anything fancy with pictures that you're probably not going to use, right? So you just take this box right here and you put your pictures in chronological order. That's where this little simple label comes in. So these are pictures from 2004. I could go back into the box, drop these into the 2004 section if it's already labeled, and I'm ready to go. Now I can take this box, which is actually what I did with some of my already sorted pictures. I took the box to my sister's house. She went through it and pulled out everything that she wanted, but everything stayed in order. Then I took it to my mother's house. She went through and pulled out everything that she wanted. Took it to my mother-in-law's house. She went through it and pulled out everything that she wanted. So now I knew that everything in here that I wanted to scrap was over here in the, in the need to scrap. And that these were all pictures that I never had to worry about again, right? And that's really kind of the key. If you keep moving things around without a system, then you don't know what you've scrapped, what you haven't scrapped. You can't get rid of things with any sort of confidence, which means you're going to hang on to things for longer than you need them. So I know it's hard for people to, to get rid of pictures. So this allows you to put them in chronological order, put the lid on the box, stack the box in the attic or wherever you keep those pictures and not worry about it. You have what you need to scrap. Your friends and family can access things that they might need or sometimes our kids are looking for things to make their family timeline at school or to do other kind of projects and then the, everything's in chronological order so they can find it as well. Really one of the nicest things about this whole system is once you get started with it, it's really easy to just continue through. So if you find a stack of pictures from 2006, it's easy to take them and put them right into 2006 or to sort them into a file folder because you haven't scrapped them yet and then put the remainder in 2006. Just the knowing where things are going to go and knowing that you have a system in place solves a lot of the problem of sorting storage and organization for you. Photo storage, photo organizer kit is going to come with the box and 10 of the photo files. Most of the time you can get 20 of the photo files into the box and so those are available separately as well. You'll be able to find them on our website. I'm sure there's a link to them somewhere on this page actually. Um, so the photo organizer kit and then in addition you might need a few extra packs of the file folders as well. Thanks so much for taking a few minutes to tune in and learn how to sort and organize your photos. Uh, glad you spent a little bit of time with me today. I look forward to visiting with you again later. Have a great day.